Hello everyone, in tonight's video I'm going to tie a fly where, well, it's just a simple fly, it's nymph, but I want to show you a couple of tricks and one of them is uh, how to make gold bead, which I don't use too often, into something more like this. So copper, mottled copper or something. So let me just start with removing the hook. And as you can see, I'm using my dubbing needle, a lighter, and that's it. So I'm using the middle portion of the flame uh, because I have more control. If you use the tip of the flame, it's, it's going. Everything is going to be different. So after it changes color to, let's say, sort of gray or even copper, sometimes. Uh, as you can see it changes colors a little bit and now it becomes gray and this is what I'm waiting for okay after this dip it in water cool it fast and that's it you get the the color I just showed you uh, I can't do that right now because I'm in the, uh, my room so I'll just go and start tying with a bead I've prepared I'm just gonna start with a hook hook is uh, just simple uh, hook, jig hook, size 12 and the, uh, the bead is 4 millimeter. so this is going to be rather heavy uh, compared to the size although you can go a slightly smaller, you can go 14 with a 4 millimeter bead it's oversized but it works well now because I want to, s to tie this fly um, simple it has to be thin it has to go cut through the water column i'll use very thin thread so that's the reason why i did it the reason why i did this to the bead is because it's it looks kind of more natural less shiny so when you have spooky trout uh, you can use this one try it uh, so 30 denier thread or just use whatever you have as long as you can make it flat, it's good. Now cut the excess part here. For the tails, you can use plain rooster if you have. I'm using cocktailion because I like it. So I'm using, let's say, maybe five burbs. I align the tips. And five is plenty for smaller flies. You can use less. Uh, you can use some something like a scale to measure. So you can do this neat thing. You align the tips with your nail, and then you can take reference point wherever you want it. So let's let make it a bead. So you touch it, your nail, and then you find the 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 speckle over here, which you are going to align with your end of the hook and every time you're going to have same tail or you don't have to align it with end of the hook you can align, align it with a bend over here so you can get short tail so that's how you do it I place the tails on the top of the hook shank from time to time you can counter spin your thread to make it flat and to make more uh, slim body of course and more smooth body which is very important for the next step now remove the excess barbs over here that's right okay now for the body I'm gonna use female peacock hurl so it's the opposite side from one side there is a bayet and from the opposite side there is that barb so I'm gonna just snip off one the reason why I'm using this one is that it has very similar effect as the bite. it's pretty resistant it's longer so it's easier to work with and it's more narrow which will allow me to go uh, more into the bead with the wider buy it you cannot go as close to the bead as you can go with this one unless you cut the buy it lengthwise which I did in a couple of my videos before so if you don't want to do that then just use this this part of the feather okay I'll go all the bit back 
yeah that's that's what I like I'm gonna counter spin the thread to make it flat you can see that under the hook that it's wider it means it's flatter okay and then again snip the excess you can use uh, sorry you can actually make the taper if you wish but it's not necessary because the, the barb is already tapered so it, it will have a slight taper and actually fish don't care we care so this one is going to, to be all about sinking fast and being fast to tie so it's much faster than the video of course because I talk too much sometimes so uh, I'm gonna use some glue and I'm using gel super glue which I encourage you to do so because it's easier to work with you have more time to deal with it so you can see it's a tiny little drop of glue and I just place it over the hook hook, uh, hook shank top so next one wrap your barb and wrap it in nice even spacings like so don't worry uh, that I didn't uh, go around the hook with a with a glue because the barb is going to distribute everything around you will see that very soon you will see the little small drop of glue running in front of the barb meaning that it's going to distribute it notice it now and now notice that like narrow side of the barb is actually able to come very close to the to the to the bead you can go literally into the bead as you can see like if you wish to have almost like a perdigon nymph something that sinks like like a little stone you can just stop everything here finish off the fly and say okay this is a fly and it will catch your fish for sure don't worry about that but I don't want to do that I'll do the whip uh, I'll do the um, bobbing loop and I can split I can split this thread but it's too thin so I don't want to bother I'll just use the loop with a nice heavy dubbing twister that keeps the tension so when I place materials into the loop and put the, those legs together this piece of brass is actually very very heavy and it allows me to keep those materials uh, tighten now I'm gonna use some dubbing it's from the hair's mask it has quite a bit of those uh, guard hairs and I'll just make it a little bit long let's call it long I'll show you in a second so it's more like this and I'm just gonna insert this stubbing very very sparsely into this loop and I'm gonna pull those guard hairs oops uh, it slipped uh, pull those guard hairs a little bit to the side so when I spin it it's gonna have those long legs okay I don't want too many okay like that like so I'm gonna remove some of it so you can see it's very sparse it's like translucent I'm gonna spin it hard and then I'm gonna go up and down with my finger okay remove the unwanted parts so it has too many of these shiny bits so I'm just gonna remove them as you can see it has this buggy effect and I'm gonna place it let's say I'm gonna show you with scissors from literally here so it's gonna be small thorax okay so I go a couple of wraps behind and then I start wrapping to the front and when you reach the bead just let your uh, dubbing loop slide down the bead so it will push the bead towards the towards the hook eye and it will secure it a little bit more okay 
I wrap my thread around dubbing loop a couple of times. And I do it one more time, and that's it. Uh, I'll finish off the fly, do final trimmings if necessary. But before that, I need to do a web finish because I am bouncing on the bottom. And that is actually another reason why I use super glue here because when it bounces on the bottom, it can actually damage the fly. And super glue will keep it a little bit longer in one piece. Okay, this is it. You can do the hot spot if you want, but I want rather dull nymph for that spooky fish that you have sometimes. Okay, this is it finished fly. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I showed you something that you may, may didn't know before and hope to see you next time. If you like this video, please give it a like, subscribe and see you next time.